Hello, thank you for coming back to my channel to watch this new little video that I made. Um, I'm just going to start off with the colors that I'm using. Well, the one that I'm putting down here is Touch Refill Ink and it is called Wine Red. And then I'm also going to use Copic B39 and a lot of Pinata Brass. Um, I've chosen these colors because put together they sort of get a little dramatic and um, that's kind of what I wanted. I, I was in the mood for something dramatic. Um, this touch ink is its not completely new to me. I don't have all that many colors. Um, I don't know if you guys have tried it. Um, I like it. It's, it's okay. Sometimes it needs a little more help to when you when you mix it in with the ISO, but but it's okay. My favorites are still Copic and Ranger, um, but it's okay to work with. I like it. Um, on this piece, I am going to be doing fades like I've showed you in my last couple of videos. Um, but on this one, I'm gonna make it a little different. If you saw my last video with the purple abstract flower. The fades that I did on that one were sort of uh, a little more simple, mostly round and sort of um, the same size. On this one, I'm going to make them a little more different and less round. And I want to do this uh, to make it look a little more a little more dramatic. Um, I'm just starting out here by putting some some ink and brass down to sort of make a center that is going to be a little diagonal. Um, I my plan is to fill out the paper more at the bottom and then narrow it in towards the top right corner. So the ink that I'm putting down here, some of it is going to end up staying and some of it I'm going to cover up. But it, it sort of gives me a little direction and sense of what I want to do. Um, I actually quite often end up covering up some of the ink that I've put down in the beginning of the piece. Um, but that's, that's okay. I actually do that a lot because once you start sort of working on a piece and you, you sometimes get new ideas and that's what's amazing about ink that you can just, you can wipe it off or you can cover it up. You can take one area and sort of keep working on it. So if, if you saw the last video with the, um, with a purple flower, you you would see that like the first two or three fades that I did, I actually ended up covering up because it didn't really match the stuff that I did. The last couple of fades were, they had more color and they were a little bit bigger. So I just sort of kept working around and I, maybe I ended up covering up half of the stuff that I did at first, but that's what happens when you know, your creativity takes over. You start working and then you realize, I'm gonna do something a little different than I thought. So it's completely okay. You wasted some ink and time maybe, but, but who cares? As long as it turns out the way you want to. Now, right here, I'm gonna start doing some actual fades. And the technique is basically the same as you've seen in my last couple of videos. I put down the ink, I add the brass. Sometimes I use my finger to mix it up just a tiny bit. And also you can dab the brass a little bit with your finger very gently to sort of break it up. And then of course, tilting it around. 
which is one of my favorite things to do. It takes a little practice, but it's so much fun once you learn to sort of control it so the ink doesn't run away from you on the paper. Um, like I said, I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to make these fades less round and many different shapes and sizes. I think I'm going to add a little extra blue. I'm sort of, I'm not making the fades from, you know, from top to bottom. I just, wherever I feel like I want to do another fade, that's where I'll go. Now you can see the tilting process. I love, I absolutely love this technique. I love watching the ink just sort of slowly float around and the brass sort of breaking up into little pieces. I absolutely love it. And it also, it makes me sort of calm when I paint like. You need patience for this technique. You can't do it really, really fast. And I, that's something I needed to learn when I first started with ink. It, I, I thought it was all gonna happen really quickly. And then when I sort of started doing this technique, I realized that I actually really, really loved that it didn't have to go fast. It made me, made me more patient. Um, and I absolutely love that. Now, when I said that I was going to fill out the bottom of the paper with ink, uh, as you can see here, I'm, I've started doing the fades, but sort of not in the bottom. And the fades that I'm doing, I'm leaving a little space in between. That will help me to get these fades in different sizes. Sometimes if you just start doing fades sort of one by one in the direction that you want, they sometimes end up in the same size. And this, this makes it easier for me um, to make them not the same. So I, I, I sort of jump around a little bit um, on the paper. I'm going to go down to the, to the bottom corner. And I'm, I'm putting a lot of brass on this. Like I said, I wanted this to be dramatic. So brass definitely adds to that. You can see the, the touch ink that I put down here. You can, you need... It needs a little help mixing in with the isopropyl. Um, with the Copic and Ranger, you can actually mix it in just by tilting it, but, but the touching, it needs a little help. If you don't mix it in with your finger, you just add the isopropyl around it. It's not gonna, the isopropyl will sort of just push the touch ink. So you need a little help. See, you can actually see here, I didn't mix it in all that well. Just need to add a little more. Now, sometimes when I've done this sort of a little a line with the center, I sometimes add more ink in the middle without the isopropyl so that you get this amazing contrast. Because when you start doing the fades, you get less and less color. And I like it to have a lot of contrast. Um, like I said, dramatic is, is the word, key word here, and there's going to be a lot of brass, and I, I think these two colors and the brass, they work so well together. I absolutely love it. I often tend to go for sort of the softer colors, but you got to go a little crazy once in a while, and these colors aren't actually like screaming in your face. They are sort of soft, but put together, and especially with the brass, it, it gives it this sort of dramatic look that I was going for. Now on, on this piece, um, I decided to only use 
two colors and I really like with only two colors and you start doing in this case fades I don't really like it when you make it sort of red blue red blue red blue I like it it, it doesn't really it's I don't like that so on this one I'm going to do a couple of fades right next to each other in the red and some in the blue um, as I sort of work my way up on this piece. Um, I, I think it, it, it adds to the drama, but it, it's sort of, it's nicer for the eye to look at when it's not sort of one, two, one, two. Um, it does actually happen often because you you feel like you need to mix them up in between each other. Um, but I like it better this way. Um, the idea of making it wider at the bottom and narrow at the top and also um, a little diagonal is because I want it to have sort of a flow. I want it to have um, movement. Um, it, it's, it's, it gives you more when you look at it. It has sort of a life of its own. Um, well, inks have a life of their own, um, but when you, when you change it up, you go a little right, you go a little left and mix up your colors really well. It, it gives it so much flow and movement and that is sort of um, my plan with this one. I think a problem that a lot of people have when they start out is that you you put all your inks um, too close together and very often what happens is it all ends up sort of round like all your inks are together perhaps in the middle of the paper and now it looks a little round and if you're doing sort of like like in an abstract flower like I did in my last video the round is good because that is what you expect when you when you see a flower but if it all ends up round it's sort of boring you want that movement and that flow it the the wispy look that sort of flows across the paper um that that's my the way that i like to do it um it, it takes a little time to sort of realize how you like it the best but i i like that sort of flow across the paper um, unless I'm doing abstract flowers, they sometimes turn out round. They don't have to be. That's why they're abstract. But on, on a piece like this, um, making all these fades in different shapes and different sizes is what makes it interesting for the eye to look at and what gives it that sort of flow and movement across the paper. Um, and then when you, you add a little extra ink, uh, different places in the center and gives it that contrast, it just, it makes it all sort of come alive. Um, I did a lot of those pieces, like I said, in the beginning where it was all sort of well, it just ended up like all colors mixed together and it was all sort of round and and there was there was no movement. But every time I started a new piece, it ended up the same. And um, I, I got very annoyed. Um, and one day I decided to just, you know, just go a little crazy and I started just making all these different sizes and, and, and some went left and right in different colors and 
it, it, it didn't, wasn't my, my best painting um, ever, but, <laughs> but I sort of realized that I, I needed to step out of my comfort zone and just go a little crazy because I got a little stuck doing the same thing over and over again. And so I, I would suggest if you feel sometimes that it all ends up the same, just go crazy and and get out of that comfort zone. It sometimes ends up really good and you learn a lot by doing that. It, it might not turn out very pretty, but you learn a lot and stepping out of that comfort zone and just trying new things will also help you figure out what it is that you like to do because being creative like this with painting with ink is it's such a process in learning what it is that you like. You can watch a lot of videos like this and learn different techniques and then you can use all of that knowledge and, and playing around with the inks to figure out what is your style? What is it that you think is pretty? What is it that you think is fun to make? Because you have to like the process of doing it. And I, I, I when I first started inks, I, I fell in love immediately. And it took me a while to figure out my style and what I like to do. Um, but I'm so happy with it. And I also continue to tell myself to step out of the comfort zone and try new things because it's fun. And there is no right or wrong with ink. There is no perfection. No piece is perfect, but it just sometimes playing around with it, it, it gives you so much. Creativity is an amazing thing. Now here you can see on the paper, I'm just moving a little away from the center. I want this fade to be a little bigger and it's always good to, to put down your ink a bit further out than where you want your fade to be. You can always move it closer to the center. And I wanted really these different shapes. So I started out actually quite far out from the center and then just pushing it in towards the middle, making sort of a long fade and a different size than the blue, two blue fades that I have right next to it. And this is also why I like uh, starting out by doing fades in different places and not right next to each other. Um, and then you sort of start filling in the gaps and working your way out if, if that's what you choose to do. Um, it, it just, it makes it a little easier to make different sizes and shapes. And once you're sort of working on one part, you, you're looking a little further ahead and thinking, oh, maybe I, I want to do that here. Um, that's the wonderful process of, of doing inks and also why you don't have to rush it. Take your time, like I'm doing right here. You can see me thinking um, and cleaning up. So apparently I didn't like that. I don't even remember. I think I'm gonna do one more tiny fade in the corner. Yes, I am. My memory apparently isn't very good. I did this two days ago. Um, if you, you probably noticed when you clicked on this video that it is quite long. And for those of you who don't really like long tutorials, I apologize. Um, and you can just, you can skip ahead in the video if you get tired of listening to me talk. I, I do tend to jabber on a little. Um, so skip ahead if you don't really like these long videos. This actually turned out a lot longer 
than I thought it would. Um, but this piece just, I, I work really slowly on this one and then it takes a while. That's okay. I actually, um, I did this um, not all at once. I did it uh, over two days. Um, and in a little bit, you will actually see that I've accidentally skipped something. There, there will be a little part missing from the video because I sort of finished, um, I think, a little more than half of this. Um, and then I got a little stuck and I, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And it was also getting a little late and I was uh, getting a little tired. So I decided to just leave it for the day. Um, and so I came back the next day and I looked at it and then I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And I got so excited that I just put on my gloves and, and continued. And um, a, a few minutes went by before I realized that I actually forgot to turn on the camera. So um, you, you, you will see a little gap in this painting. Um, I apologize, but also the video is sort of long enough as it is, so I, I feel like it's okay. Um, even though it is longer than I thought it would be, I, I feel like, and I hope that some of you don't really mind, um, watching the whole process. You might feel like I talk too much, but that's just because I'm very passionate about this. Um, and I... I do videos where I speed it up a bit and I don't talk and um, I like videos like that too but when I first started with inks I did like most people do I, I went on YouTube and I started watching videos and like the first maybe 15 20 videos I saw were all speeded up and even though it was it was fun to watch I I sort of had this feeling like it looked so easy. I mean, I knew that it took longer than the fast video showed me, but it looked so easy and effortless and it looked like everything just turned out perfection. And when I then started a piece and I got so frustrated because I thought this isn't easy. This doesn't go as fast as I thought it would be, and it is not perfect at all. And I got a little frustrated. But eventually, I, I found these full-length videos. Um, yeah, they were a little long, but seeing the whole process was a game-changer for me. I suddenly realized that, no, it's, it's not always that easy. And sometimes... You, you don't make a really pretty, beautiful piece in 10 minutes. And I, I really, really loved watching these full videos and also hearing someone explain the process and the technique. And so that is why I've decided that, yes, I might do some, some videos um, that are speeded up and without talking, but I will also continue to make videos like this. And I hope that you enjoy it and find it helpful. And, you know, you always have the possibility to skip ahead a little if you're thinking, oh, that Randy chick, she talks and talks and talks. Um, <laughs> I, I try to find interesting things to say. Um, if you have any suggestions, <laughs> about things you would like me to talk about, you leave a comment and I'll, I'll take it under advisement. Um, but, you know, let me know whether or not you like these full length videos. Um, I would really like to know what, what you're feeling about this or if it's 
if it's too much. Um, as you can see here, I've started working my way out to sort of fill out more at the bottom. I'm not going to go all the way down. I would I am a big fan of negative space. I don't think I've ever done a piece where I filled out the entire paper. Um I like negative space. I think it it makes the colors pop out more. Um when you got that white around it and sort of in between it. Um I might try one day to do a piece where I fill it all out, but I'm not sure it's really sort of my style. Now you can see I almost got sort of a line there at the bottom. You could put a ruler on it almost, and I didn't really like that. So I'm adding, a, a, I think, a, a little blue fade, and I messed up the paper. Um, I don't like straight lines, and it's sort of... It looked very straight. So just adding one more before I continue to work my way up. Oh, you can see all that brass in the light. I love it. I absolutely love it. What is your favorite metallic to use? I, my first love was silver. And then I started using gold. And then I discovered brass and I think a brass is my favorite now. It works with pretty much all colors. Um, I know I've said a few times, I think, that I'm going to make a video about metallics. I haven't actually gotten around to it yet. Um, because metallics are a little tricky. I think the easiest one to use is brass because you can get it to work with, I think, all different brands of ink and most colors. Um, silver and gold from different brands are more tricky, I think, because doing what I'm doing on, on my pieces, which is sort of breaking it up into smaller pieces and making these beautiful lines, the, the, the gold and silver do not work like that on all colors. And it is very frustrating and I also feel like a lot of people pick the wrong colors and then it doesn't work and they get so frustrated and so I'm gonna I'm gonna get around to making a video on metallics and sort of the do's and don'ts um, soon I hope I've just been really busy painting and making some commissions um, but I, I will definitely do that. So, so far, I'm pretty happy with this. I got the flow. I'm just sort of deciding whether or not I want to move it to the left top corner. I'm not quite sure. And I think we're getting closer to the place where I got a little stuck and, and didn't really know what to do. I'm going to move out again here and I, it, it, to give it more flow and more movement. Um, I'm sorry, I just, I got a little distracted. I'm trying to talk and drink coffee at the same time and it's not going very well. I just spilled coffee on my table. Um, <laughs> I would like to just give a quick shout out to um, some people last couple of days and one today also on Facebook who showed me some pictures or some pieces they've done using my technique from my last video. I really, really appreciate you guys showing me and letting me know how you, if you like the techniques that I'm showing you. Um, a couple of you showed me little abstract flowers like the one in my last video. And I think this is your first time 
trying this technique, and I have to say I'm unbelievably impressed with your results. If this is your first time trying, it makes me so happy that you that you like trying out my stuff and my techniques. And um, I think some of these uh, comments and, and paintings that I saw were in um, um, Alcohol Ink Art Community on Facebook. And um, if you're not familiar with the group, I would highly recommend that you go on Facebook and find it because it is an amazing group. I love it so much. And there is sort of this, um, it's so it's such a supportive group and there is room for everyone um newbies and uh, more experienced artists and there are so many beautiful things and so many different things to see in this group and everyone is so helpful and always gives i think good and helpful and constructive criticism so um, if you're not familiar with the group, go find it. It's an amazing place. I absolutely love it. Um, I think we're getting closer to the part now where I'm going to... Yep, you missed out. Um, this is where I forgot to turn on the camera. So, well, you can see what happened. I added more blue. I added a little more blue in the center and some brass, and now I'm start working my way out um, left and right. What I want to do now is not go too wide because this is the place where I want to start sort of narrowing it in towards the top right. I still want it to be sort of diagonal, but it has to narrow in now. So I'm trying to make the face a little smaller. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to make them really, really tiny, um, but I'm going to just, you can see at the bottom of the paper where I started, I have like maybe four or five fades across the paper and sort of just below the middle, you can see there's only like two, and then it widens out a bit again. But at the top, I'm gonna go back to maybe sort of two fades and make them a little uneven and a little different in size. And all of this helps you get that flow and that movement across the paper. Um, I had a period of time where I, I really love doing those diagonal pieces instead of always sort of having something round in the middle of the paper. But I, I got a little stuck with sort of it's being more of a straight line. And that's when I, you know, decided to try and step out of that nasty comfort zone and, um, and started making things more like, like this piece. I feel like there's nothing wrong with having a, a straight line, but this is sort of, it's more interesting to look at the flow. It just gives it so much more. And then also having that brass flow sort of in and out of the different colors. Um, I, I like it. Um, I do have um, quite a lot of brass on this one. I don't always add that much metallic, but because I wanted sort of a little more dramatic look, um, metallics will help you get that. Um, I messed it a little bit again. I don't think, uh, did I mention that I'm using Nara paper? Um, it's pretty much all I use now because, yeah, just thinking about where I want to go again. Um, I love this paper. If you haven't tried it, you should. Um, it is amazing. There, it, the inks leave no stains on this paper and you can wipe everything off. So I'm just going to put a mat on it because sometimes it helps me figure out what I want to do. 
and where I want to go uh, direction wise. Um, good tip. I, I, it helps me sometimes. Um, it, it gives it a different look once you put the mat on. So I do that a lot um, to figure out what it is that I want to do. So you can see the ink that I'm putting down now is more in towards the center, that diagonal line, because I, I want to get it more narrow now. So earlier I started some of the fades much further away from the center. Now I'm getting a little closer so that I can narrow it down towards the other corner. Um, I want to just take um, a quick minute to talk about my heat gun because um, I still get so many questions about my heat gun and I think not all that many ink artists use heat guns most use hair dryers the reason that I I'm using my heat gun is because um, when I started doing inks my hair dryer was way too powerful and I already had the heat gun and so I tried it out and realized that it actually worked perfectly for me you can turn down the heat and the volume, um, which is, is what you need when you're working on synthetic paper. You don't want too much heat because it will warp the paper. Um, and with the techniques that I usually do, you also don't want too much air because um, you will just blow the ink and the ISO all over the paper. Um, I th am thinking about retiring my heat gun. I call him uh, Robert. I I've, a while ago I thought like like he needed a name, so his name is Robert. He has served me for a very long time, but lately he has been starting to make some quite sad noises. Um, I'm getting a little sad just talking about retiring him, but. Robert is getting tired and old, and so I feel like it's okay for him to retire. Um, so I have just ordered a new hair dryer. I, if you've seen other artists uh, here on YouTube, you've seen these lovely tiny little hair dryers um, that doesn't have a handle on it, and. I thought it was time for me to try one of those because I think they're really good. So I've ordered one. It hasn't arrived yet. It is a Remington and it has this little, um, it has a little brush attached that you take off. And um, so I'm really, really excited to try this. I'm sad to say goodbye to Robert. Um, I might just not throw him out yet, just, um, I might keep him, just say hello to him once in a while, um, because he has served me really well. Um, for all the people who ask me about heat guns, you can use a hairdryer. If you do choose a heat gun, you have to make sure that it has different settings. You have to be able to turn down the volume of air and the heat so that you don't ruin your piece. Um, when my Remington hair dryer arrives, I will, uh, I will show you in one of my videos and give you a little review on how I like it. I see many other artists using these and I hear only good things. So, um, I'm going to retire Robert and, uh, try out the hair dryer. I've, I think I've heard a lot of other artists mention they use a Revlon um, hair dryer. I couldn't find that where I was looking, but I think the one that I've ordered is um, basically the idea is the same. So a review of that coming up in another video. Now you can see the two, the fade that I'm doing right now and the one before that, I am 
sort of pointing the face a little towards the top um, at the middle of the piece and it, they are sort of going out to the side and at the bottom they're sort of going down. This also makes it a little more interesting um, and helps with that sort of flow and movement that they are sort of, I don't know if you could call it pointing in different directions, but in lack of a better word. So the, when I'm getting closer to the top corner, I'm going to sort of point them in that direction. The dark side of the fades is going to go down towards the center of the piece. It gives it such a nice flow um, that they have these different directions. And I'm actually really happy that I decided to stick to my original plan of making it sort of diagonal because halfway through where I took a break until the next day and where I forgot to turn on the camera, I was sort of considering it, letting it sort of split up into two different directions. Um, I think that would have been fun, but something about it just didn't feel right. It felt like it needed to go up towards the top right corner. And I'm, I'm really happy that I stuck with my plan. Um, often I, when I have a plan, a very specific plan of what I want to do, I, I sometimes end up changing it sort of halfway through the painting and um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but um, have a plan, but also be willing to change it because, you know, inks sort of have a life of their own and you can't completely control it. So it, it's sometimes you end up doing stuff that wasn't part of your plan, but often it, it can turn out even better. So never be afraid to change the plan. Um, I'm, I think I'm only going to do like maybe one more blue fade and I am really, really happy with the size of this one and the direction, um, towards the corner. I absolutely love that. Oh, look at that brass. I can go on and on about brass. It is so amazing. Are you getting tired of hearing me talk? Because I've been talking nonstop for like 43 minutes now. <laughs> I, I hope you're not sick of me, but I, I can just go on and on about inks. I'm in love with them. Um, if you are getting tired of listening to me, the good news is there's only like six minutes left of this video. <laughs> so um, I had a, a fun idea. Um, because I, I have had a couple of people commenting on my other videos um, who mentioned where they're from. And I would, I, I, I think it's really fun, uh, especially here on YouTube, to hear how many different countries are represented in these comments. So if you would like to, to let me know where you're from, I would really love to hear it. Um, if you don't know where I'm from, I am, uh, I'm Danish. I am sitting here right now in Denmark. It's kind of cold. It's winter. Snowed a little today. Um, but it would be fun to hear where you guys are from. And um, also maybe let me know if you are complete newbies or if you've been doing inks for a while. Um, I would really like to hear it. Now back to the painting. Not completely happy with that fade anyway. It sort of changed a little along the way and made this little round thing that I didn't like. So one more try um, to see if I can make it a little better. The direction is good, but yeah, some stuff happened that I didn't really like. So I'm going to try and fix that part. Still um, having two fades sort of together, but sort of dragged out towards the corner. Um, keeping it uh, a little narrow. Um, 
I'm really, really happy that I sort of stuck to the original plan and didn't start going in different directions. I think, I think this sort of has everything that I sort of wanted it to. Um, diagonal, wider at the bottom, narrow at the top. It's sort of a little dramatic, a lot of brass. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I would love to hear what you think. And also, um, please let me know if you try this technique or, or to do something similar. I would love to see it. Um, I am going to leave... Um, I'm going to leave um, a, the colors and... Um, the name of the color, sorry, that I'm using. I'm going to leave that in the description below the video. Um, I've mentioned it in the beginning, but just in case you don't want to go all the way back, you can see what I used in the description. I'm also going to leave um, a link for my Instagram if you would like to follow me there or leave a comment on Instagram. Also, you know, if you're not on the uh, Alcohol Ink Art community on Facebook, I'll, I'm going to leave a link for you there too. It's an amazing, an amazing group if you're not already there. Um, I, I've had a few people ask me where I buy my supplies, um, particularly NARA paper. Apparently it's it's not that easy to find. I buy all of my supplies um, from uh, a few Danish um, web shops and I'm going to leave a link for you from one of them who I know um, usually always have NARA paper, both black and white, and I think they just started uh, shipping internationally. So I'm going to leave a link for you in the description. Um, just want to make sure you know that I'm not getting paid to endorse um, this shop. I'm simply just trying to be helpful. It's a really great website and um, they're also very helpful if you have any questions. Um, so just trying to be helpful, not getting paid or anything. Um, just trying to do what I think is the last fade tilting it down towards the corner. I think this is turning out better than the first one I did. And a lot of brass on this one. I absolutely love it. I think this might just be the most metallic I've ever put on one piece. I, I usually use um, the different metallics, but I've really gone overboard on this one, but I absolutely love it. So dramatic. Um, as always, if you have any questions, um, leave a comment and I will uh, do my very best to answer you. I, I know stuff about ink and, and techniques, but I, I don't know everything, but I will, I will try my very best um, to answer you. Um, you are, of course, more than welcome to subscribe to my channel, The More The Merrier. And um, I'm already having ideas for a couple of more videos, so they will hopefully be out soon. This is done now, I think. And I'm just going to do show you what it looks like with a mat on. Here at the end of the video because it always gives it something a little extra. Um, a long video, I know, but um, I hope you enjoyed it and um, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Have fun with your inks.